from Louisville, Kentucky. Angela Kelly putting out uh, what always is kind of a first team lineup. And it doesn't get any more first team than when you have Trinity Byers in your team. The attacker didn't score a goal the last game out, but she had two assists. Look for her to be more potent in front of goal in the final third. Ashlyn Miller getting a start as well here tonight. Uh, this is a team that has tremendous experience, a lot of fifth year seniors, as you see the two coaches and staffs shaking hands here. Uh, gorgeous night to go. Two games to go now in non-conference, including tonight and then Sunday against the University of Central Florida. Texas in the burn orange. In the white is Texas Southern. They were 5-8-3 and three last year. It'll be a quick turnaround for both of these teams. Texas Southern has struggled to score goals. Only a goal in five games. They've been shut out four of their last five for Angela Kelly. 5-1-1. One one. Best start since 2018. Your referee is Charles Farr. And it's game on here in Austin, Texas. Texas and Texas Southern. First header of this game, well, you kind of would have put uh, a little bet on it. It's MJ Cox, the center back who has three goals on the year for Texas, now a sophomore. It's Jaden Tristolf. And here's MJ Cox, had a goal in the 5-0 win over UTRGV. They had 27 shots on goal in that one, nine goals. Misimo, we gave her the big build up in the open and she's already trying to involve Mac McFarland there who's out wide here tonight. A quick, quick turnaround here, two games in a row here, a lot to take out of this here tonight. What do you think Angela Kelly might have said to this team before the start of this game? It's exactly that, how do you start this game Come in with the right mentality. Do not play down to the level of your opposition. I remember it as a player. I always found it more difficult to play these games because you can get into some unhealthy habits that won't serve you in Big 12 play. Yeah, which is honestly, uh, it's, it's here in the blink of an eye. It's coming on September 22nd and 25th, and it starts with Texas Christian University and Texas Tech. And I think mm -hmm. we have to put this in context. You are starting it off with two heavyweights in the Big 12. And you're starting it off with the defending champions, a nemesis of yours that they will have circled on the calendar from last year. Yeah, played them in the Big 12 Conference Tournament Final. Texas had a 1-0 lead over TCU and Eric Bell, but TCU, the Horned Frogs, would come back for a 2-1 win in that one. And I must remind you that Texas went undefeated during regular season play in Big 12 Conference and still didn't win the title with TCU winning it. So it's a great burgeoning rivalry. TCU really has grown that program under Eric Bell. And we called those games leading up to conference play. What a moment it was, a real launching pad for Trinity Byers during that time. And it came within two games of the first conference game. Texas Southern in possession here. Looking to play direct again, which is kind of their modus operandi so far here. Regan. MJ Cox gets it out from under her feet. This is Carly Allen. Lapo. Lauren Lapamarda going by the nickname Lapo. He's got two assists on the air, very busy uh, outside back. And there is a head coach, Lindsey Vera, was a player at North Carolina State, played in the W League, the WPS with Boston and Sky Blue, has been an assistant at UTRGV, and was a head coach for a year at UNC Asheville. And she knows uh, tonight will be a big test. And a young coach who's getting to test her true colors against one of the big powerhouse organizations and schools, if you will, of college soccer. Texas Southern plays in the SWAC. Last year were 4-2-3 in conference play, 5-8-3 overall for their first win of the year. Misimo checking back to the ball there, knocks it away from pressure back to MJ Cox. It's a direct ball over the top. Surprised that it's not a little bit more of an energetic pressing start here from Texas? Uh, not really, I think of the output of what they had. Remember, they only played a game a few days ago on Sunday, and now they're back at home. Texas is a team that tends to grow in games. They're not fast starters given this season. 
Byers, McFarland now, the fifth year senior, drives a ball, it's a glancing header off the post. It was Misimo who was in there. Off the ball from McFarland. Here's McFarland again drives it in. And it's cleared by Texas Southern. So the first good chance of this game comes to the Longhorns. And the player we highlighted, Lexi Misimo, the only player who makes a near post run. Her movement in the final third is what sets her apart. And Asha Miller. We're here from Texas. They're coming into the box down that right side. Ashlyn Miller again. Here's McFarland. It's to the back post. Nobody's there. Cam Brooks. Looked for a moment there like she was trying to line up her left foot. Here's Brooks now. She has gotten forward and that goes ballooning over the top and out for the goal kick. Ashton Miller gets it wrong. She tries to go for power when I think just the instep of her foot would have guaranteed a goal. Mackenzie McFarland, that 1v1 matchup on the outside, she's gotten so much better at that this season. Lexi Mismo with a glancing header, good technique by her. Ashton Miller though, kind of flaps her lines in the end. Last game, Texas, I think it was the right post. This game, the left post was their undoing. Five times hit heavy metal in the last game. Kinsey McFarland, wonderful to have these fifth year seniors. There's six of them on Texas's roster. That additional year you get, knowing the system, knowing your coach, knowing your teammates. Does that put more pressure on you this year to go deeper in the NCAA tournament? I don't say pressure. I think that's pressure that comes from in, within and internally. I don't think from without. This is a group that believes, and I, I think they have all the tools, all the skill and talent level to get it done at the next level. Conference play, yes. Regular season, yes. But now can you get it done against some of the biggest names? They already played North Carolina, played them tough. And I think getting results away from home is going to be what sets them up best this season. Truly assets, though, having those kind of fifth-year seniors. Oh. Set piece here, oh, it's wonderfully worked. Here's a squared in ball by Regan hitting the near post there was Trinity Byers goes out for the goal kick, but something a little different off the set piece there. And something that you can tell they've been practicing off the training ground. Coach Hans Kelly really putting an emphasis on set pieces this season and for good reason, they've had success. McFarland, like shot out of a cannon, that blazing speed, but this is a very good tackle. It'll go out for a corner here for Texas, who have improved that element of their game. And of course, taking these corners, the very talented midfielder, Lexi Misimo. Keep an eye on the type of service that she hits. Early on in her career, she was trying to bend the ball in, but when you have some of the athletes in the box, maybe a more floated ball, flat service will do. Mix of zonal marking and man-to-man. -man. The header's there. It's pounded in. It's a completely unmarked MJ Cox who picks up her fourth. And she is a center back with four goals on the th season. What a threat off set pieces. And right on cue, that flat service, the ball is floated in MJ Cox. She gets that running start, not as far as we've seen on some of her other goals, but she'll take that matchup. Nothing you can do when you're caught flat-footed as a defender with the on-rushing MJ Cox leading the way for the defenders in goals. And I wonder how she looks in conference play. I think she could be one of the highest scoring goal scoring defenders in Big 12. Got a great vertical leap as well. As much as heading is about timing, uh, you know, we noticed on that she's uh, got some hops. The goal comes in the eighth minute. By the way, she's got two game winners and she's tied now for the lead on the team with four goals. Hopefully she saves some of these goals for <laughs> TCU and everyone else coming down the pipeline. Well, we all know how important set pieces are going to become even more when you get into the Big 12 tournament and Big 12 competition during the regular season. Lapamardo. Carly Allen. To Lapo. So the important game's first goal will come today to Texas. And it comes off a set piece. Cameron Brooks now. Who's played up front as well on the left. Trinity Byers came back into midfield. Now we make it a strong run here. It's Misimo into the box. Cuts it back. Miller to the far post. Just over hit it to McFarland who knocks it back and it's a swiveled hit there. And in the end, not a problem for the goalkeeper, Christoph. The shot coming from Shimpkin. 
Good work by Shimkin and McFarland. Team play, unselfish play in the box from McFarland. Cushioned that first touchdown for a one-time strike from Shimkin. Just couldn't get enough power. That's Jaden Kristoff in goal, senior from Atlanta, Georgia. At 17 saves against the University of Louisiana Monroe. Incarnate word, she had 12, so she has been a busy young goalkeeper this year for Texas Southern. And she's already been tested a few times. Didn't come up good with that close range header from MJ Cox. Miller cutting inside. Tries to get the shot off, that's blocked. Regan, Miller, Misimo now. It's all Texas on the ball. Byers with a great run, and it's a second goal. Banks it in off the post. Trinity Byers made a beautifully timed little run here. Found the ball at her feet beautifully and tucks it away. It is 2-0 Texas. This is quality team play. Keep an eye on this run from Trinity Byers. Runs off the shoulder of the center back, something she does so well. When she plays higher up the field, she's so effective, playing like a true number nine. And that left-footed finish, adding to the count of left-footed goals. She sees the bottom corner begging from the on-rushing goalkeeper, and then has the composure and the placement to fire that in the back of the net. So Trinity Byers. Not happy that MJ Cox picked up a fourth to tire. She has now the five leading goals on this team. Are goal scorers ever happy when someone gets uh, anywhere near them? She had two assists against UTRGV, and of course, we know she was with the under 20 US national team down in Costa Rica in the under 20 Women's World Cup. And Byers this year has produced two game winners. Here's Ashlyn Miller. Just gliding past the player. Clips it down the line here. Cameron Brooks now. Texas Southern trying to recover here. And the offside flag was up. On this left-hand side, a lot of combination plays. Short passing is coming from the fact that Ashton Miller's tucking in, playing in the pocket. The goal that came off Trinity Byers comes between that interchange between Miller and Lexi Misimo. Keep an eye on that as this half wears on. Lapamarda off the throw. Well, you love an outside back that's dependable, that goes box to box. We've been so impressed with her play since she's come to Texas. Here's Byers with that great ability to come back into midfield and combine, and you see that then Misimo gets in front of her. Very difficult to track all that movement and the interchanging of positions. It makes both of them so dangerous is when one drops, the other one is occupying the space between the two center backs. And you need that if you're gonna have players dropping in the hole. McFarland, good looking cross. Again, it's Misimo getting to the near post there. And it'll be another corner here for Texas. And guess who's coming forward? MJ Cox, who scored the game's first goal in the eighth minute. A player I'd like to see get involved on the goals is Carly Allen. She's got size, she can jump as well. Last season, got a goal to her name. Remember last year, Carly Allen, that switch going back to center back for Emma Regan. It's Misimo off the corner. Ball still loose in the box here. Texas Southern trying to get it cleared. There's Allen on, on cue. It'll be another corner here. That was agonizingly close. Cam Brooks tried to stick out her right leg from the deflection. Misimo this time plays a short one. Gets it back now, clips it towards the near post. That's headed away. Getting ahead on it was Alyssa Taylor. For Texas Southern, lobbed back in here by Regan. And just cleared out of danger there. Emma Regan has represented Canada, fifth year. One of the big leaders of the team. 
Angela Kelly has made that very clear. She was all Big 12 second team last year. If Texas started to be successful this season, look for her to take that next step on being on the first team. When she got introduced to the midfield, it allowed some of the attackers to get forward to have that security behind them. Well, squared towards the near post. That's side footed away by Texas Southern. Again, Lapamart is going to leg this one down and switch it to MJ Cox. Part of that uh, very talented solar program that is a real feeder to Texas, along with the Vancouver Whitecaps in Canada. McFarland now. And off the side foot, not making the best of contact there, Lexi Misimo. Surprise, Misimo went for the volley instead of the header. She's already been effective, hitting the woodwork off one glancing header, a player who can score in a variety of ways, but she also was unmarked. Here she is again, getting a lot of time on the ball here. It's Ashlyn Miller. It's Trinity Byers on. It's a big save off the crossbar and then headed in. So Byers will get a second. It'll make it 3-0 now. Initial save coming from Jaden Kristoff. But Trinity Byers will tuck it in here. It is now 3-0. As a winger, your primary job is runs in behind, a good angled run. The weight for Misimo is to perfection. But Trinity Byers, if she hits that anywhere other than at Kristoff, that's going in off the first time shot. But credit to her, this is the hunger and desire of strikers to score goals, is reacting when the first effort doesn't go in. When this ball goes up in the air, not the first time, but the second time, Kristoff pundles that back towards Trinity Byers. Byers says thank you very much and gets that third goal for Texas. So a 10th and a 15th minute goal for Trinity Byer. She now has a pair. She goes to six on the year. Southern struggling to get out of their own half there. That was uh, Victoria Pucci you just saw on the ball there, one of their more talented players. And their struggles have come off the pressing in midfield of the Longhorns. Emma Regan and Jilly Shimkin in the middle of the park being very aggressive when that ball gets played in the midfielders for Texas Southern. Lapamarta, McFarland, Byers, that's tackled away. Coming in there was Alyssa Taylor. Well, it's a great test for Texas Southern. There's no question about it. You can take something out of this competing here. And it's another chance. It's Byers has rounded the goalkeeper, but the offside flag was up. Initially, I thought that was a well-timed run from Trinity Byers. You can always tell when the striker makes the run a bit too early because they slow it down when the ball's in the air. <laughs> Combination play here from Texas Southern. In the end, Ari Mendez couldn't control it. That central midfielder you talked about. Mendez last year, two goals, two assists from Louisville, Kentucky. Look for Mendez to be one of the players that gets forward in transition. That connection between her and Alberto for Texas Southern is going to be one to keep an eye on if they're going to be successful tonight. Zari Mendez right there wearing number seven. Transfer from Murray State. So captive opportunity to get the ball forward here. They play it towards Victoria Pucci, who by the way is from Caracas, Venezuela. Lapamarda. Hey, 
And here is Carly Allen. Right here from Austin, Texas. You gotta love getting players uh, right in market. State of Texas is producing soccer players for programs all around the country. McFarland's got huge space here. Misimo is in the box, so is Ashlyn Miller. Could have been left for Miller. It's gonna be Misimo off the turn. It's blocked and cleared by Texas Southern for the moment. It's a long range hit, took a deflection and just goes wide there after the effort out of midfield from Emma Regan. So Texas trying to pour it on here and get a fourth. Emma Regan already has a goal to her name this season. We know she can hit him from distance. And again, Mackenzie McFarland steamrolling down this right-hand side. Regan, when she gets to the top of the box, I think if that doesn't get touched, that's going in the back of the net. She hits it, low driven shot, gets her hips around it. Credit Simone Sheridan for the block there for Texas Southern. It's Misimo off the corner. This one goes to the far post. It's a snapped header again. It's pushed wide there by Kristoff. And it was MJ Cox again getting her head on it here. Boy, it's, uh, it's like a cornucopia of chances for her offset pieces here today. It's going to be good practice for her in a match like this. When she backpedals back, she does so to steady herself to gain position, but then makes a decision to get more of a tame header towards goal. Maybe sometimes redirected back to the far post. Cam Brooks was there unmarked. Jaden Kristoff coming up with the save there, concedes the corner. By the way, she had 52 saves already coming into tonight. The goalkeeper for Texas Southern. In it comes. And Kristoff will pounce on that there. She had eight saves at Abilene Christian, which was their last game, a 1-0 loss. It's flared out wide here. Texas Southern trying to get a little something going here. It'll be a throw in Texas. How about that? The, the Austin Samba, Samba group. Each and every game they're here. They set the tone. Austin FC games. Wouldn't be Austin if there wasn't music. There you go. Ashlyn Miller. Mackenzie McFarland now. Fade the shot. Goes back to Emma Regan. She's going to push it wide here. The offside flag is up. Uh, Lexi Misimo. You see the hesitation from Emma Regan when she picks her head up, waiting for Lexi Misimo to maybe come back on side. Something we don't see too many offside calls from Misimo because she has good positioning, good awareness of what she's, what's around her. She spends more time in the box than we know, right? I mean, it's interesting how she just kind of slips in there and you look up all of a sudden, you saw her just playing a ball in midfield and there she is in the box trying to get on the end of delivery. And it's how she runs, she glides a bit when she plays that ball, pops up in different positions, but her ability to accelerate deceptively quick in acceleration when it comes to getting in the box. Yeah, I think over uh, last season, we used the word effortless quite often with her on the ball, as well as Trinity Byers. Here's Byers. Nice takeover there with Ashlyn Miller and a shot. I like that. Nice little improvisation there with Trinity Byers and Ashlyn Miller. That's good to see other players taking shots from distance. With so much focus being put on Trinity Byers and Lexi Misimo, other players like Mackenzie McFarlane and Miller should try their luck from outside the box or even inside the box. Yeah, I like that little takeover there to create space and then you got Miller cutting in on her right. Of course, she hit that absolute blast against TCU in the Big 12 Conference Championship that had put Texas up 1-0. Changes now coming in a moment here for Texas Southern, who are going to bring a few players on. This one comes into the box, and MJ Cox completely unmarked. That one goes off the post from Brooks, and it's a follow-up. And it's an Emma Regan goal. And she'll pick up her second of the year. So Texas... Gets another one. Well, the party's getting started here in the first half at Mike A. Meyer Stadium. Another floated ball in and two Longhorn players at the back post. That post is getting some love and second time we've seen it hit the post. Credit to Emma Regan. 
As an attacking player, she's a defensive midfielder with attacking instincts on this play. You have to follow up rebounds. She's the quickest to react and not the cleanest of strikes, but she won't care. It's what and how you get in the back of the net. Credit to Cam Brooks of getting that on target because it sets this up for Emma Regan to tee it up and bundle that in. Emma Regan, when she came to Texas with Julia Grosso, was an attacking outside back and has really shown her versatility playing in the differing lines of the team in both wide and central. But the moment she came here, uh, she did not have a hard time fitting into the college game. McFarland. Byers is allowed to get turned. Miller left it. And this one in the end is not a good finish from Emma Regan. Again, unselfish play from the Longhorns. Ashlyn Miller, when that ball comes, that ball was set back for a first time finish. She opts to dummy it. And if I'm Ashton Miller, I'd want that one back because I would have laced it on goal. And Morrigan really did not get any pace and connectivity on that finish. In the end, it was very tame. MJ Cox now. Well, it's four goals in 22 minutes for Texas. McFarland again, huge space here. Texas Southern struggling to keep up athletically with this group. It's a layback here, Ashlyn Miller. Now she'll want that one back. You just were talking about <laughs> Ashlyn Miller, a real clear chance for her. Mackenzie McFarland again, because she stays wide and gives width as a winger, that's what provides this opportunity, knowing she has Smith beat 1v1 in that foot race. But maybe she overcooks it a bit with the cutback pass. Maybe that was a two-touch finish rather than a first-time finish. Ball squared back, it's Misimo. It's a shot that's another save here. Kristoff will hold that one. It has been dominant in all facets of the game for the Longhorns here against Texas Southern. McFarland, a wonderful touch. Going towards the end line, she'll square it back, but right into the arms of the goalkeeper, Jaden Kristoff. This is good practice from Mackenzie McFarland on wing play. Beautiful ball from Lexi Misimo, which we've seen her do throughout this half. Pick her head up. She has the vision and the technique to hit that diagonal pass. And McFarland takes a perfect first touch. But I think it's a bit of the indecision of what to do on the byline. I'd like to see her improve on, on that play because against Big 12 opponents, you need to get that right. Maybe the chip ball into Leximissimo was the option rather than the ball on the ground. And we talked about the importance of set pieces as well and efficiency. You're not going to get this type of amount and volume of chances against the likes of Texas Tech and this competition that's coming up, Central Florida including on Sunday, which Texas has got a little bit of a bone to pick with them, having lost to them last year, early season 4-0. And they'll want to make a statement to rectify things from last year. Tiffany Roberts Sahadik will come in as the Central Florida coach. Associate coach is Tim Sahadik, who played in Major League Soccer, her husband. Of course, Tiffany Roberts, gold medalist, winner of a World Cup. Pretty impressive Outstanding career. career. <laughs> How many husband and wife coaching combinations do we have? Yeah, for a long soccer? time. You gotta love it. Kind of know what's talked about in that house household. the shots raining in from the Longhorns. They had 27 shots on Sunday against UTRGV. Looks like they might be able to eclipse that tonight with how they've started this game. And the Longhorns will turn it around on Sunday. UCF will be here at 1 o'clock. And you'll be able to catch that game right here on LHN. Texas ranked 21 now. It 
has been dominant. Longhorns again. Missy Mel was at the tip of the spear. They tried to pick her out. Almost as though she's playing as a center forward today, and Trinity Byers is doing more of the playmaking. I like that. She has that in her locker. It's something she can do, especially given some of the opponents that will try and snuff out that midfield and make it more compact. Runs from beyond in midfield can give her and Texas a different dimension. Miller back to Regan. Four nil score line here. Texas over Texas Southern. Texas the heavy favorites coming into this one here tonight. Brooks shakes off the bump there from Pucci. And it'll go out for another corner here. Cox, Carly Allen will come forward. Sixth corner here for Texas. And Cam Brooks has been industrious getting forward and she uses that physical play and the advantage in using her body to fend off the defender and sets up this corner kick. Victoria Pucci trying to tackle her there. This one comes to the far post. It's headed and parried away there by Kristoff. It's so difficult for Texas Southern because they immediately get the counter press from Texas and don't have a lot of targets up front. Everybody's back, all hands on deck defending. And you talked about MJ Cox winning the first header. Second balls are going to be important when you have a team that's smothered in their own end. Route one trying to get the ball forward as much as possible, get away from their goal. Credit to Emma Regan for being active and active defending. Changes coming for both teams. Liz Warden, the talented freshman, getting set to come on. Missimo now on the ball. Flares that out wide. It's McFarland, her touch is too long out for the goal kick. From that play technique, letting Mackenzie McFarland down, she knows it. But again, Lexi Missimo, the vision, the technique, Knowing that that's where the mismatch is, the diagonals, drawing pressure to one side and then picking her head up, hitting a well-taken flighted ball over to McFarland. Off the goal kick. Regan wins the header. This is where if you're head coach Ange Kelly, how do you push your team? How do you still keep that fire alive when you're up 4-0? And maybe holding some of your attackers accountable. And Trinity Byers and Lexi Misimo getting them on the ball more. Here's Misimo now. She got it from Byers. Misimo to the end line. It's blocked and into the hands of Kristoff. That'll go out for a corner kick here. So they continue to pile the corners on here. Well, you have to remain interested. I, I don't think there's any question. Others will get opportunity, you would think, tonight, Michael. And that's where maybe subs coming off the bench keep it fresh. Players that are vying for minutes, vying for impact on this team, getting them in the game because that hunger will be there from them to make a statement in a game like this. There's a the target, MJ Cox. Corner comes in. This one nearly goes in off the Misimo corner. And out for the goal kick for Texas Southern. Texas Southern had a good start at Abilene Christian. They would ultimately lose 1-0 in that game, but had a good start. Smith, Victoria Pucci, uh, Melissa Knudsen all had some chances early in that one. I think in that game, Smith had maybe five shots, three on target. Interestingly enough, though, she's been put at left back in this game, which I think has stunted Texas Southern's attack. The 
the athleticism, something of a challenge for Texas Southern here to match here tonight against Texas. Starting to see uh, more opportunity for others here for Texas. Coming on, Tenny Akindoju, the senior from Nova Scotia, Canada. Now that's a great option off the bench when we begin to think about the Big 12 and conference play. It's great to get a different type of striker to come on. Akindoju, more of a hold-up player. She's not going to drop in and play make with the likes of Trinity Byers. And I think also it allows other players, Lexi Misimo, to have a target player to play off of more, makes it more predictable for her to be that out-and-out -out attacking midfielder. Mendez has picked up a yellow for Texas Southern. Trying to stay compact, trying to force Texas to play through him. Texas has done that efficiently here. That one's over hit. That'll go out for a goal kick. Warden was the target there. What a start Liz Warden's had to her collegiate career. A couple goals, a couple assists to her name. Holly Ward has jumped up off the bench now. Charlotte Blumel has come on, the redshirt sophomore from Germany. So we're seeing some liberal substitution here from Angela Kelly towards the end of the half here. Cam Brooks trying to involve her squad here, you would think, today. Miller with the turn away from pressure there. Regan has split the center backs, flares out a nice ball to the right side. Ward. Now, Liz Warden, you and I spoke about the wonderful job she did in the absence of Trinity Byers when Byers was away with the under 20 women's national team. And just that versatility she brings, whether she is called on to play as the lead striker, the hold up play, the hunger to score goals. Uncanny for a freshman that you see that sort of play right off the bat. Rare touch here for Savannah Madden in goal. Had only one save against UTRGV. You would think Sunday she will take a little bit more activity against Central Florida when they come here at 1 o'clock. I think that lack of saves is down to her defenders doing the job. Here's Warden driving into the box. Now she's going to get it back on her left foot shot. Oh, that's a great save. Fantastic save with the right hand. Jaden Kristoff basically just robbed Liz Warden. Warden doing well to get her first touch. Shifted out of her feet and hit a stinger of a left-footed shot. Kristoff matches her, though. Gets down low very quickly. She had to be because that ball had life and that ball had some venom on it. Wonderful save and good shot stopping there from the Texas Southern goalkeeper. Holly Ward has come in for Ashlyn Miller now. It's a good shift from Ashlyn Miller. Ari Mendez looks up and doesn't have a lot in front of her, but she ends up getting fouled there, wearing number seven in midfield for Texas Southern. She had a pair of goals and a pair of assists last year. She's being asked to play an unfamiliar position as a striker tonight. Last season, more of an attacking presence from midfield. She's going to have her hands full with MJ Cox and Blue Mel. Kelly made a lot of changes in the last one. Here's uh, in full flight Holly Ward. Ward now. He's as busy as can be with that left foot has earned a corner there. He's last touched by Haley Vaughn. She is a fifth year graduate student, Haley Vaughn, from Canada as well. Holly Ward came out of that uh, Vancouver Whitecaps program. A couple of good pipelines here to Austin, Texas. Christoph has parried it away. They can't get it cleared. 
Or defenders are going to need to support her here. Ball is still loose. It's like a scrum in there. It's finally cleared. That hit is blocked and pushed away. Misimo to the back post, and it just goes over the head of Liz Warden, who comes from a wide position and turns into a center forward. And that was inches away from being another goal or assist for Lexi Misimo. Liz Warden angles her run. She has that hand up. And also the second time we've seen Lexi Misimo put one in the mixer. Akin Dozu trying to back into Kristoff. Kristoff doing well to get a hand on it. She's really come to life in the last couple of minutes, making some much needed saves or else this could really get out of hand. Olivia Ahern is also on from Canada. Lumel, Regan over the top. Warden Byers, it's Ward. Ward is cut in on her right, pulls it off the post and in. It's the inside of the post, kisses it, and goes into the back of the net. So it's another for Texas, and it's a goal for Holly Ward here. Ward will pick up her first of the year. It's a good ball in from Emma Regan, but even better run from Holly Ward as a winger. You have to have the patience knowing that you're wide open, timing your runs in. She has the speed and also has the craft. She has her defender is just flat-footed, and she has her beat dead to rights, cuts in on her right foot, already had a left-footed cross blocked on the previous play. Gets it on target, gets it low, and off the post and in. Well, good for the confidence. That's her first goal of the year. It comes in the 37th minute. So now 5-0. Regan. Charlotte Blumel. Emma Regan, over the top it comes. Warden's gonna point to that corner flag there. No, it's gonna be another corner. So the Longhorns, who had five goals against UTRGV, have picked up five here in the first half against Texas Southern. And I like this for Holly Ward, a player last season who would get in the box and at different times this season has gotten in the box in dangerous positions, but the consistency of the final product has been missing and shows good confidence there to score. Tenth corner of the game here for Texas, just showing uh, their domination and their ability to get to the end line. Took a deflection and went in. It was a side volley. And it was the German, Charlotte Blumel, who will get credit for this goal. Her teammates uh, all excited for her here. It's Misimo off the corner. And another set piece goal coming from the flick of Cam Brooks. Good for her to redirect that in. And unfortunate for Kristoff. She gets a hand to it, and her defender gets in her way. Kristoff's goal has been peppered. Blumel doing well to keep her balance and an acrobatic finish from the German to get that ball in the back of the net. And comes off of Alyssa Taylor. Number 22, they're going to call it, I believe, an own goal. But all credit to Charlotte Blumel, who dipped her left shoulder and hit a good side volley there. Previous couple corner kicks, it's been a bit of a scramble in and around the TSU box. And when you don't clear your lines, you will get punished against the caliber of opposition like Texas. Holly Ward. Misimo. And that one will go out for the goal kick. Well, if you're Lindsey Vera and you're the head coach at Texas Southern, how do you keep this positive and, and how do you get something out of this here tonight playing against a nationally ranked program? I think you break the game down into small pieces. Number one, maybe get a shot on target. I think that's the ways you can build confidence as a team when it's not going your way and take some more risks. TSU's had a lot of numbers sitting back because of Texas back pressing and winning second balls. I'd like to see them maybe compete more in second balls and then hit on the counter. Misimo has been allowed to turn here. She's gotten to the end line, rifles it in across the face of goal. Holly Ward was trying to apply the final touch there. 
Macy Mo has really been afforded a lot of time and space in this game, and you give that young lady that type of room, uh, you were going to pay for it. She's been thriving since the first whistle, having the lay of the land, can see the field. It's almost like she has eyes in the back of her head at different times, dictating the tempo. Ward makes a good run across the face of the goal. Just can't get that final touch. Ward again, finding big space down the left side here, driving into the box. He's gonna try it with her right foot. Nothing doing there. Kristoff had that near post sealed off. Holly Ward making a similar run to the one that she made on the goal that she scored. Her first touch is good, but maybe her second touch gets away from her, which slows down her momentum. She does the right thing of going towards goal, making Kristoff make a decision. But she had two teammates coming across. Maybe a cutback was on. So it's another corner for Texas. Lexi Misimo to take it. It's curling in. It's punched and parried up in the air, but uh, it will be a possession here for Texas Southern. It's maybe called a foul on MJ Cox. In the last 15 minutes or so, Lexi Misimo, at times I've wondered if she's going for an Olympico, putting it in the <laughs> mixer, knowing that maybe Kristoff can bat that in her own goal, but it makes a goalkeeper uncomfortable when you have athleticism with MJ Cox, Cam Brooks, and Blumel. Another point here would be Texas Southern. Do you mentally stay in this? Do you compete? Can you compete for an entire two halves here? But they've rarely gotten over the halfway line here in the first half. They've been smothered, second balls, winning duels. Texas has excelled in that tonight. Misimo was there, Holly Ward. Misimo will take a left-footed shot and pouncing on it there again is Kristoff. Well, it's it been, has been a busy half for her. Yeah, although it's been six goals, I've been impressed with her willingness to not give up and fight. When you have one player like that, that determination can be infectious. I think this team needs to go into halftime, get a breather, and then come out swinging because you have nothing to lose at this point. Ward twisting, turning. Misimo. Clearance went off their own defender. It's laid back, it's a finish here, and it's another great save from Kristoff who's going to deny Olivia Ahern. Akindoju keeps this play alive through sheer work ethic, and she pays for it on that clearance. This is good build-up play from Texas, and Kristoff, as I said before, given the scoreline, her effort, you have to applaud that. Most goalkeepers, you give up six goals, your head goes down, but she's not giving up. She stays with it, and that's why it's not seven. Makes a save on Ahern. Ahern was looking for her first. Be another corner here. Something we've said repeatedly. It'll go towards the penalty spot. It's a header going away from goal from MJ Cox, who's trying to pour it on off these corners. MJ Cox has had so many headers in this first half. Already connected on a goal tonight. Only a sophomore. Ahern gets it wide. It's a curled in ball. Oh, it's swept in beautifully at the near post. And it is Teniak and Doju, the senior from Halifax, Nova Scotia, swept that in beautifully. Great delivery and a great swept in finish. Keep an eye on the run of Akindoju. When this ball gets wide, Warden picks her head up, delivers that front-facing cross. Akindoju gets across the face of her defender, and that is set up for that first bounce to be a first-time finish. When you're that close to goal, she has momentum going her way, and she gets the right height and gets power on that to get the goal. Hey, 
So up again, we mentioned she will be potentially a very important option off the bench. Provides a physical challenge, too, for opposing defenses. And she's direct. She provides runs into the box. That's very different from Trini Byers and even Liz Warden at times. You have so many players who want the ball to feed. Akindoju is a player who wants the ball into space. Ticking down towards a minute left here in the first half. Glenn Davis, Michael LaHood. Hope you're enjoying this on LHN. Texas, two games to go here before they will get into Big 12 Conference Tournament play. Cox with the header there. No shots for are Texas we, Southern yet. Are we doing hands of death? You have seen seven first half goals here. Longhorns came into this, the heavy favorites over Texas Southern. And Angela Kelly has been able to get playing time for a number of different players here in this one. First half is going to come to an end, so it's seven goals here. And we welcome uh, the head coach of the Texas Longhorns in. North Carolina not having a good season last year. Tennessee, South Carolina making runs, not being a high, high seed in college soccer. Okay, interesting second half here. Texas in the burn orange, sun beginning to go down. Texas Southern in the white, still trying to get a first shot on goal here today. And we'll see how they can compete here as Misimo off the kickoff here. Drives it forward once again. This is a good look at the freshman. That's Brianna Thompson. This is Mackenzie McFarland, knocks it into the box. Shipkin got nudged off and squares a good ball back. Cameron Brooks was making a run in there. And Ashton Miller was wide open at the far post. Good aggressive start from the Horns. And you heard Angela Kelly in our interview going to halftime. Uh, you know, this is... Uh, not about just giving people playing time. It's, hey, you got to go out and implement what we have been doing in training sessions in this game. Because I think she believes that she can have impact players coming off the bench for a conference play. These are valuable minutes when they come on to get their confidence high, get the standard high, because depth is what makes a difference. And it's a big deal because uh, if you were to have any injuries or, or, or people that needed to step up, you're hoping that they've gotten some minutes under their belt, they're comfortable, they're a part of a win here potentially. Uh, not potentially, but uh, it's, it's a pretty good safe bet. A player on the ball, Ashton Miller. Look at her impact last season, a player who started some games. Slipped in, offside flag is up on Misimo. And a player who started some games early on, came off the bench in the middle of the season, but in conference play, she really solidified her presence for the Horns in getting a massive goal in the championship. Now she appeared 20 times last year. She's another one of the players from Solar, like Lexi Misimo. Last year had 916 minutes from McKinney, Texas. And now Ashlyn Miller is a sophomore. And it's amazing, you know, Miller, Byers, Misimo, all just sophomores. There must be something in the water. Jay Cox, let me throw that in there too. <laughs> something in the water in that Plano, Dallas area. Direct ball here. This is towards McFarland. That's a nice push forward here from Texas Southern. You like to see that energy. Uh, Smith, first time we've really seen her get across midfield. A player who traditionally plays as a winger or anywhere across the front line for TSU. Stationed at left back and that 1v1 match between her and McFarland's been a mismatch in the first half. McFarland's won that. 
Smith, a sophomore from Corona, California. Well, in some cases, it's matching your better athletes up against this powerful front-running team that includes Trinity Byers. Kind of hesitated, now exploded. She's going to square it back. It's a shooting opportunity. Oh, what a save. Again, from Jaden Kristoff. He's going to pile up saves again here today. She's had to weather some massive storms. Especially inside her own box. Not for her. It'd be a couple more goals. Here's McFarland again. She floats it in, and it'll be handled there by Kristoff. Trini Byers is steaming towards the end line. Does a good cutback for Asha Miller. Love the first touch from her, but just can't wriggle away. I think that extra step, she doesn't have the right balance. Gets enough on the shot to trouble Kristoff. But Kristoff jumping off her line, making a massive save. She's had a couple of really sparkling moments preventing goals. Kenzie McFarland. It's Jill Shimkin, the transfer from Penn State, had a great spring season, five goals there, two goals and two assists, basically has plugged in to the position that Julia Grosso, the great Canadian international gold medal winner, now at Juventus, had last year. She left college early, and what a good pickup Shimkin has been. And I think she gives more balance in transition for Texas. Last year, Texas playing with one pivot and Emma Regan and then two attacking midfielders, sometimes getting caught in transition at the start of the season. They rectify that with having more defensive solidarity with Regan and Grosso dropping back as the two sitting midfielders. This season, Shimkin, that's more of a natural look for her. I think Grosso is more attack-minded than Shimkin is. There she is, Jilly Shimkin, Rockville Center, New York. And again, only a sophomore, so as much as we talk about the super seniors, the fifth year graduates, um, this team has a lot of youth that is primed for the future as well. The sophomore class is special. And it's down to the recruiting of Vance Kelly and her staff. Colin Soccer, you have to recruit, recruit well. Shimkin, squared to the back post and cleared. Shot is blocked from Brooks. Brianna Thompson playing that for that freshman. McFarland's cross will be easily handled there at the near post from Kristoff. So some of the freshmen to keep an eye on and remember these names, Tony Lopez, Brianna Thompson, who's out there. We also have learned a lot about Liz Warden, who's gotten the most minutes as freshman. But this is a team not easy to break into with 10 starters coming back. I think it's a team also built for the future. They have a lot of starters, they have the super seniors, but this is with the fact, the, with keeping in mind that the seniors leave and you're not losing as much from the younger players. Now with this blend, you're hoping to get into that NCAA tournament and make a deep run. Here again is the work of Aaliyah Smith. It'll be a throw in here for Texas Southern. There's a look at Mackenzie McFarland. Fifth year senior, Bell, Texas. Really is a threat down this right side. Provides a lot of great uh, penetration. By the way, 36 is a good number, isn't it? Yeah. It's your birthday. I, I, I was wondering. I just got some uh, information that today's yeah. your birthday. Yeah, I try to keep that on the low. <laughs> well, happy no. birthday to you, Mike. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Happy birthday. Yeah. Comes it's around all downhill from here. You <laughs> yeah. look at me and you can tell it's all downhill. Nah, nah, you're in great shape. Nah, it's all good. It's all good. Congratulations and a big happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. Can do anything special? Huh? Watch some soccer right here in Mike A. Myers. We are doing something special <laughs> right now. That's right. We have the privilege of calling this game on LHN. 
big switch of play. It's not the best of balls there from Byers. Of course, you were calling the Austin FC game. I was there in attendance last night watching it. It was a big night there as Austin soccer just exploding at the MLS level as well. That was McFarland trying to get in there. That was a fun game to call last night. Uh, it was epic. Musa Gita coming off the bench in the last 30 minutes to score not one, not two, but three while taking goals and send the Verde and Black to the playoffs. First time in club history. That trick for the Moose. And of course, Angela Kelly and I have had a lot of conversation about MLS to Austin. And she's real good friends with Josh Wolf. So a lot of wonderful stuff going on here in combination between the pro game and the college game. And there is a big push here for NWSL to Austin as well. So a lot of great things really going on. A lot of possibility. Going to be another corner here. In the second half, Jilly Shimkin has been the aggressor in getting out of midfield with her deep lying runs. She's a player that will love to get on the score sheet ahead of Sunday's game. Two goals, two assists on the year for Shimkin. BC Mo to take the corner. Towering header there. It's cleared. This is really, once they've lost the ball, have won it back really quickly and have really prevented Texas Southern from getting into their half of the field. And that's why we've seen so many shots in the first half is come from active defending, is keeping plays alive. Byers, McFarland, Cam Brooks coming in there, trying it with her right foot. It's Misimo. She'll get a shot off. Clean handling there by the goalkeeper, Jaden Kristoff. I'm amazed at how many two-footed players Ange Kelly has on the field. Cam Brooks, a left back who's known for using her left foot, but looks like a natural swinging on that shot with her right. Sometimes I'm not sure if Lexi Misio, Misimo uh, is predominantly right-footed or left. Got magic in both boots. Oh, that's a good ball. It's Byers on two goals. She'll get a third. It's a hat trick for her. It is now 8 0 Texas. So Trinity Byers now. And these two combined in the first half. Lexi Misimo threads the needle for Trinity Byers, angles her run, peels away from the two center backs. And with that ball, she lets it run across her body, and that's to draw out Kristoff. She knows she wants to go against the grain, gets power, gets pace and accuracy. And Trini Byers, a player who didn't score a goal against UTRGV, rectifying that in this game, looks in form and has big smiles. With her three tonight now, she now has seven. That's a team leading seven. She did have two assists against UTRGV. UTRGV. It wasn't for lack of trying. That post, <laughs> that right post. I'm surprised Byers didn't go and have a word with the post after the game. Well, remember last year, she didn't get her scoring boots on uh, too quickly in the college game, but she was without a doubt contributing game in and game out with holdout play. She's highly impressive, but the goals were flowing right away in the college game, and then they did. Uh, here's Shimkin now. She's going to try to get her first here today. Shimkin. We'll try it. It's a follow-up. Misimo's there, but pouncing on it there is Kristoff. Athleticism and speed. Breakaway speed from Shimkin on display there. She started the second half brightly. Opting to go to goal by herself. And rightfully so. When no one's coming out to mark you, have a go to goal. Thompson, McFarland. Got an eye on number 22, the freshman. Maybe not a night you're going to get tested as much as a defender. I think there's still something to be gained out of that is what you do in possession. For a young player like Thompson, it's being sure-footed, maybe breaking lines. 
one comes to the far post. McFarland trying to get there and it's just swept away there by Smith. She's picked up three tonight. Third pack Texas player with two or more hat tricks. Shimkin trying to whip a ball in there, trying to find the head of Misimo. Something tells me that may not be her last hat trick yeah. here I, in Austin. As a 36-year-old on your birthday, you are a wise man. So. <laughs> I feel like I get wiser each year, but then sometimes I doubt that. <laughs> uh, I have a feeling you are. I'm not worried about you. Ticking down towards the 32nd minute mark here. Shimkin now top of the box. Flared out on the right is McFarland. And here's Thompson now. Makes a ball that goes out. Now, you know, this is a night where defenders, and, and there are stages of even comp highly competitive games where you may not be engaged, but it's really about mental. It's about thinking ahead. It's about being positionally set up in good starting places to contend with transitional play and counterattacks. We'll get back to that in a second because this is Mendez. And here's a shot that's off the mark. It's the first time they've had a good build up here that has led to a shot. And most importantly, it's about keeping a zero. These are the games that if you take anything from this as a defender or goalkeeper, you want to get out of here with nothing on the scoreboard. And you have to compete with yourself a bit, is how many shots do you hold your opponent to? First shot, can you keep it limited to zero shots on target the rest of the way? That's what the top programs, that's what the so top soccer schools do in NCAA soccer. By the way, that was Knutson, the freshman from Fontana, California, with the first shot for Texas Southern. Byers trying to get turned. And Smith will just drive it out of there. It's a very high-powered Texas. Skill, ideas, power, pace, movement, mobility. Individuals who can do it on their own. But they're going to have to test it soon in Big 12 Conference play. Misimo, after the pass from Byers. Misimo to her left will get a shot off. It's parried away again by the goalkeeper, Jaden Kristoff. It's good patience from Lexi Misimo. That interchanging between her and Miller has led to some good opportunities. Couple goals already created between the two of them. Rockford's her defender and tries to get one near post. Kristoff up to the challenge. It's a remarkable 19 saves for Jaden Kristoff so far. We still got 30 minutes to go. And it comes again. Now that's just to tag on to the fact that she's had 17 in a game against University of Louisiana Monroe. She's had 12 against Incarnate Word. She had eight at Abilene Christian. And tonight a remarkable 19. In the last couple games, look at the, the drop off in goals against. They were conceding goals at a high rate first couple games, and then because of her play, limited to 1-0 losses. Now it's up to the attack to get going. When you have a goalkeeper playing like this, your attackers, you have to take the pressure off by being more dangerous in the final third. And their focus will be on the SWAC conference play, which will be coming up for them. They will start that. And then the SWAC tournament is November 3rd. So it all comes very, very quickly for both these programs. It's so condensed, the college game comes very fast. More changes, Warden coming on now. Tenny Akindoju, who's got one. Holly Ward coming on for Texas. McFarland, Byers goes off. And even Lexi Missimo coming off now. This might be with an eye to Sunday's game. Getting some much needed rest. These are UT starters who log many minutes and will log a lot of minutes in Big 12 Conference play. That's a good matchup on Sunday. University of Central Florida, that's going to be your last tune-up before Big 12 Conference play, and it'll be two former North Carolina players under Anson Dorrance and Tiffany roberts Sahadic going up against Angela Kelly. That's a nice little sidebar to that game. Head coach Ants Kelly will remember last year's result and want to rectify that. The game that the Longhorns were in up until halftime, giving up two goals before half. That yeah, was a bit of a wake-up call. 
And Savannah Madden will have a ball to deal with here and quickly distributes to her left. Just good look at Angela Kelly. So ingrained here at Texas, former coach at Tennessee, Canadian international, four titles in a row as an NCAA college player at the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Holly Ward now has found space. She squares it back. Oh, Shipkin, beautiful there from Shipkin and flares that wide, just some great tight control using the sole of her foot and lashing the left-footed shot wide there. Impressive moment. This is almost a flashback to the goal she scored against UTRGV, a little bit closer to goal. She has this in her locker, gets a bit of a deflection in the end, but she has power and the accuracy going for that top corner. That deflection steers it away the last minute for a corner kick. That's a player creating her own shot there. Off the corner, Texas, they go to the near post. Kristoff will pounce on it. And we've mentioned her name probably more than anybody here tonight just simply because of the amount of shots and decisions she's had to make here tonight at Mike A. Meyer Stadium. She's number one. MJ Cox has been number two in the first half from corner kicks because Texas has had a boatload of them. Texas is going to get a free kick here. And that's a pillar of your team, MJ Cox, right there. She's got four goals as a center back. You go up the middle with her and then Regan, Misimo, Byers, you got some spine. Talking with staff members, the one thing they identify about her, she's got personality. For a young player, she's got loads of personality, and also, I think she could be one of the future leaders, captain material for this team. Stepped in last year, not missing a beat as a center back, and I would agree with you 100%. Here's a good looking ball towards the back post. Not out far enough, and it'll be a corner for Texas here. But for me, MJ Cox is mature beyond her years. The way she carries herself, the way she plays the game. And also the way she reads the game. She's gonna be crucial in games like this, given the substitutions coming in, given starters like Carly Allen coming off, and players that don't get a lot of time getting more minutes today, holding that standard high. It's a short one. Shimpkin to the back post. Still loose in the box here. And here is the freshman, Thompson. You could hear Angela Kelly say, make the easy pass to Jilly Shimpkin. That was a bit of a force pass from Thompson trying to go Thread the needle in towards Ashton Miller and Akadoju. Oh, it's loose here. It's another chance. It's a step over. It's Miller. Shot will take a deflection. Offside flag is up. Kristoff playing with fire in the end. Waiting to the last minute to try and clear that. And credit to Miller for hustling, getting the block. And for a split second, I thought she was going to hit that first time. Hesitates, which allows the TSU back line to recover. Junior Karen Henderson coming on for Texas Southern. Robinson will take a break. Miller presses this and gets her body in front. Keep an eye on this decision. She picks her head up, knows the goalkeeper's out, but then steps over. That allows TSU time to recover, and Akindoju trying to get out of the way. Can't get out of the way of the line of fire in the end. Offside call. Ari Mendez fouled there. It's going to allow Texas Southern to move up the field a bit more here. So against UTRGV, the only players that went the full 90 minutes were Savannah Madden, MJ Cox, Emma Regan, and Lexi Misimo. And you see the dividends it paid off. Four goals coming late in the game to make it 5-0. Akindoju is offside. 
love the goal she took in the first half at the near post, just kind of swept the momentum of the delivery into the goal. And it comes with her positioning. Leaving her marker in the dust by maybe moving away from the ball and then cutting back towards the ball. That creates space. Smart play from the, the experienced striker. Ward, Shimkin. Good work here from Texas Southern. It was Evan Melton who showed a nice burst there. And Texas wins it back. So it's interesting without Lexi Misimo, we see Shimkin doing a little bit more of the playmaking now and becoming a little bit more of the fulcrum. This is probably a good exercise to be out here without Lexi Missimo right now, who is such a focal point and who you play through so much. And that puts more responsibility on her and Ashton Miller. Miller, a player who has experience playing in big games at an attacking midfield position. As you said, look for Shimkin and Miller to arrive and maybe getting five numbers in the box rather than just four. It's a good dynamic for this set of players to be doing it without Lexi Missimo for a moment here. Ball goes out wide. This is a whipped in effort. Oh, it's off the crossbar. That was Warden, the freshman, the highly touted freshman. Cut in on her right. And Madden off her line with some involvement here. I like the way Liz Warden plays. Direct has one thing on her mind is get to goal as fast as you can. Showing off a skill in the last couple games. Couple step overs, boasts a powerful shot. Effective out wide, despite the fact that, like, you know, her dynamics and the way she carries herself seems to me to be more, in my judgment, as a center forward, but seems to be able to do it out wide as well. And I think she'll grow into that role as a center forward, a player who likes to face up and size up her defenders because she has speed, something that good wingers have in their toolbox. Of course, ball's on the opposite side of the field. You can see her getting into the box and turning into a center forward and getting on the end of crosses. Hey, don't know a coach who doesn't love a goal-scoring winger. Cox, that's a good ball to turn at the fence. It's, Tremendously accurate over distance. Here's Texas now. It's Warden. Warden's going to square it back. Ward was trying to get there, but that was all initiated off great direct angled ball from MJ Cox. And it's those moments that you see how she can thrive as a winger versus being a striker. Wingers don't do, wingers do step overs. They love that 1v1 combativeness, winning that 1v1 matchup, but look at her movement now. She's getting in the box. Cross speared out of there by Texas Southern. Under 20 minutes left here. And that's the last shot that will go over the top again. It's Warden in there. Texas scored seven first half goals, one here in the second half. Score line is 8-0, and there is the talented freshman, Liz Warden. A lot of talk about her coming to Texas. One of the most highly recruited players in the country. Rightfully so. She is the pedigree of those sorts of players who come into college soccer early on and find themselves on the youth national team for things like the U-20s. Mendez was trying to make things happen. Here she is here. She's fouled. It'll be a free kick for Texas Southern. They were 5-8-3 last year, 4-2-3 in their conference play. Here scoring goals. They've only got two goals. This in their seventh game. 
Madden will collect that. One of those players who scored a goal, McMillan. I think they miss her tonight. Effective in transition. Plays as a right winger. And can use your speed to get up and down the flank. It's a chance for Akindoju, and that'll go wide. It was direct over the top to her. It'll go out for a goal kick. Akindoju with a good timed run, well-timed run to get in behind. When you see the on-rushing goalkeeper, she makes a decision to take the shot early, but maybe take a touch around Kristoff. And now you have an open net to roll that ball in. Sophomore Amelia Abbott has come on for Texas from New Zealand. Thompson. Blumel, who had that good side volley that led to an own goal in the first half. That was the sixth goal of the game for Texas. Miller, Brooks, Warden, and unforced error there, throwing Texas Southern. It's a well-flighted ball, I think it was Ashton Miller. Akindoju choosing to go with her weaker left foot, doesn't have a confidence in that to get it over the on-rushing Kristoff. Maybe she could have been better off taking it around Kristoff. Goalkeeper coming out in no man's land does just enough to divert that chance. That was Henderson who came off. Sammy Garcia comes on. The junior from Lake D Jackson, Texas, for Texas Southern. And Kristoff uh, did get out to a shooter there quickly and maybe altered her. As a striker, you're almost surprised sometimes when you're looking down at the ground thinking you have more time than you actually have. And it's been part of Kristoff's style of play, being aggressive off her line. She's had to be aggressive to keep out some of the golden chances Texas has had. Under 16 minutes left. There is a transfer from Penn State, Jilly Shimkin, and there is Jaden Kristoff, who's over 20 saves here today. She's getting close to 100 saves on the year. Uh, just has been under fire. Texas with an eight nil lead. Vanderven comes on, wearing number eight here, along with Amelia Abbott. So a lot of playing time for a lot of players here today. Uh, it's all good when it comes to participating and being a part of it and getting minutes. You know, the players, the starters watching on will be rooting for their teammates. That's why it's a team sport. These are athletes who go to training and put in the work behind the scenes. It's set the stage up for their teammates to succeed. Coming up next, Houston versus number one, Texas. Longhorns are 6-0. They face Houston for the first time since 2010. They lead the all-time series 44 to 16. Zoe Fleck has been named the Big 12 Conference De Defensive Player of the Week. And that's for the second time this year. 35 total digs and averaging a lead leading 5.83 digs per set. Texas to the end line and it goes out for a goal kick. Uh, that's a good one coming up. Houston versus number one Texas, keeping to the theme here of Houston versus Austin. Texas Southern from Houston, Texas. Look at Holly Ward, who got her first goal of the year. She makes a confident run to the end line. And takes an extra touch in the end. Set the goal kick. Warden just goes over the top. With the changes coming in, Liz Warden going into that striker position. We saw her play there in the first couple weeks with Trini Byers away on international duty. She boasts a long distance shot, powerful shot, leaning back. Just a bit too much. I think Kristoff would have that covered if it was on target. I 
That says it all, 47 shots. Majority of them coming in the first half. And the majority of the goals as well. Only one second half goal for Texas, seven in the first half. Stay on LHN because coming up next is volleyball, number one Texas against Houston. That one over at Gregory Gymnasium. It will be hopping over there tonight. Thompson, the freshman. Sydney Nobles. Abbott knocked it inside. Warden banging away there. We'll get another shot off. That one will go over the top. And she is trying to find some space to get shots off here and produce a goal. You can see she really wants a goal to continue this hot streak that she's been on early in this season. A player who is such a quick release. One thing on her mind, she gets in the box. Has a good sense for a young player where the goal is and where the goalkeeper is. I like the fact that she's insatiable here. Uh, you know, a lot of people and players sometimes take the foot off the pedal in a game like this. And when you're a freshman, to see somebody still competing there and still goal hungry is a good thing. She's a player who I think wants to not just be in the st starting lineup as a young player, but also be an impact player for this Longhorn team. Shot there is scooped up in the air, and Kristoff again. Well, Texas trying to ride this one out. They will take on the University of Central Florida on Sunday at 1 o'clock, and then after that, they will head into their play in Big 12 against TCU. Currently number 17 in the nation. And then they will take on Texas Tech. And again, those games are both away. And that will begin on September 22nd and September 25th. So two huge games. Here's Nobles in full flight now down the right side. Picked her head up. She's got runners in the box. Squares it back. Trying to go over the top there was, I believe, Amelia Abbott. Good run from Sydney Nobles. Player already has a goal to her name in this season. Another freshman on, Tony Lopez. She's from Palmetto, Florida. Warden now. Still trying to get her goal tonight. Ball comes to the top of the box and Swept out of there. Good defensive play there from Ari Mendez. Turned in crosses headed away. How about Cam Brooks? Been industrious, has gotten up and down. A player who is trusted in that back line alongside MJ Cox to be consistent. Saw Lopez there, wearing 21. Here she is on the ball, a freshman. She'll knock it back. Only one second half goal for the Longhorns. 56th minute Trinity Byers, that gave her the hat trick here tonight. Texas has had quite the schedule this year. ACC competition with UNC, Pac-12 with Oregon, West Coast Conference with Gonzaga, SEC with Florida, and that is by design, right? It's to build up that resume, to get in the tournament, 
yes, you win your conference, but for everyone else, you got to have good RPI, you got to have good positive wins against good competition. Great comeback win against Gonzaga, draw with Oregon, lost to UNC, the only one on the year, and a big win over the Florida Gators as well. And of course, you're getting a taste of stylistically and maybe through purpose of play, the differences in conferences sometimes. And you never know, as we saw last year, when you're going to have to go on the road in the NCAA tournament. It's always good to get prepped for every possible scenario you can have. Nobles was the target, broken up here. Been a long night for Texas Southern, but to their credit, they have battled gamely here in the second half. They've prevented everything but a 56-minute goal from Trinity Byers, so it's good to see them finish this out with real spirit here tonight. It comes from the work and play of their goalkeeper, Kristoff. From minute zero, she's come under fire, but she stayed right with it, and that has a domino effect with players in front of you. A real leader tonight on the field. Nobles driving central here. And there is Kristoff off her line. Twenty saves tonight for her. Blue Mel. Lopez. Nobles. Angela Kelly still doing her coaching here. Wants to take every ounce out of this game here today against Texas Southern. Chance for her to monitor some that don't get a lot of minutes. And hold them accountable. She talked about it at halftime of saying, hey, we're Texas soccer and we have a standard. It's a heck of a ball. Breezing and chopping, twisting, turning, squaring it back, and it just goes across the face of goal. Texas throw in here. It's Holly Ward again. Been active in this second half. Good run, times her run well. When she stands up her defender, she can go left or she can go right. But look at that cutback there, takes two players with her, and then tries to square that ball across. And I think that was going in if it didn't get a block from the defender. Yeah, tremendous change of direction there. Lopez. Lopez hits a nice looking ball in there. And that's a header that's just going to flash wide. Great ball from Lopez, the freshman, to pick out the run of the sophomore right there, Holly Ward. It's a good angled cross met by quality run of Holly Ward, who's come to life late on in this game. Lopez picks her head up, whips that ball in. Ward makes a slashing run between two defenders. She does well to get a glancing header, aiming for that far post. More from Texas here as they try to drive forward through Sydney Nobles. it back with her right foot. Cam Brooks trying it off the volley there. And this is Mendez who knocks it forward. Texas gets the ball back here. Mendez has put in a shift in midfield here today. Sydney Nobles now has got a lot of space here on the right. Basically coming in here uncontested and then the challenge there. And the good effort continuing from Texas Southern who are not quitting here. That's Stephanie Robles. And Sydney Nobles gets this ball in. She's going to the end line. She opts to cut it back towards her left foot. The defender's giving her the right side. Maybe take another touch and whip it in with your right foot, but it sets up this corner kick. Olivia Ahern to take it. To the back post.
Elbow shot is blocked. Player was in an offside position to Warden. As we get on to, down towards three minutes. For Lindsey Vera, the head coach of Texas Southern, what do you take away from today? You take away the fact that the team didn't give up. They stuck with it. And yes, you're playing against a high profile team, the 20th ranked team in the country. I expect Texas's ranking to go up given a result like this. It's all about what you do in conference play for a team like TSU. Long range hit there. It's kept in front of her by Kristoff. Now got 22 saves here tonight. She had 52 coming into this game. That's incredible. 74 saves on the season, and that's in seven games. Under two minutes left. This one ends, all focus shift to the University of Central Florida. That one we will have right here on LHN this Sunday, also on the ESPN app. UCF is on the road tonight at Memphis. And let's not forget, they played North Carolina. 2-1 loss in Chapel Hill. They uh, actually had the lead in that game. And beat Texas 4-0 last year. So that sets up a great game there. Angela Kelly and Tiffany roberts Sahadic both played their college soccer at North Carolina, are very familiar with each other. So great storylines ahead of that one on Sunday at 1 o'clock on LHN. UCF going into tonight. 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. Well, Michael, you got... Uh, some final thoughts on this one overall for Texas. Coming into this game, it was what type of mentality were they going to have tonight? They got three early goals, different players on the score sheet, and most importantly, they kept to zero, kept the standard high. Job done for the Longhorns. Warden. Lopez knocked it inside. Texas still territorially uh, where they started this game on top of Texas Southern. Working on win number six here on the year. They will go to five. They will go to five and one now at home. Long range shot is blocked. Texas today will score eight goals, seven first half goals in this one. It is a hat trick for Trinity Byers. Cox started it in the eighth minute, Byers in the 10th and the 15th, 22nd Regan, 37th Ward, an own goal in the 38th, 44th Akindoju, and in the second half, Trinity Byers. That's the final score tonight. Texas, 8-0 over Texas Southern. Our next game Sunday, 1 p.m. Central, UCF against Texas. Coming up, volleyball. Houston versus number one Texas. For Michael LaHood, I'm Glenn Davis. Let's send it to Tyler Denning and Nicole Brannon.